Hello and welcome to today's video. About a year ago, I made a tutorial on how to get started using the dry brush technique. And in that video, I sort of promised that I would make more in-depth videos about it. And today is finally the day for the tutorial part two. In this video, I'll be using a tool that I didn't use in the first video. So this is how they complement each other. Let's dive right in. So for this tutorial, I'll be dry brushing this ear, the pencil outline of which you can already see here on this piece of paper. We're going to be using this oil color by the company Coil. Honestly, don't know if that's good oil color or not, but I've used it for dry brushing before and it's good enough for that. Then this detail brush, the number two Raphael, which has almost no bristles left, but I love it. This number six flat brush and this makeup brush that I like to use for overall shading. And then this eraser that has seen better days and uh, two erasers in pencil form, one of which has a pretty weird shape, I don't know, from sharpening. I ended up not using the electrical eraser, but of course the kneaded eraser is a very important piece of the puzzle. And now the stars of this tutorial, these stencils or masks, I don't really know what to call them, but they're basically just cards of plastic or paper that I cut into the shape that I need them to be. And yeah, how I use them, you'll see throughout the video. So here I'm going, uh, yeah, putting down some pa paint, dipping the first brush in it and trying to distribute the paint throughout the bristles. I mean, just the tip of the bristles really. The part that you're not going to be seeing in this video is how I brush it off on a piece of paper because I was just using the top of this paper that I was using here. And uh, you, yeah, you wipe it on the piece of paper. And uh, I sped up the, this video in this part, so that took me longer. I would say that the first time that you're trying to distribute the oil paint, I don't know, you brush it off for maybe like a minute or so. And then when you reload the brush and use it later on, yeah, it gets quicker over time. But I, yeah, you don't want to rush this step because distributing the paint evenly onto the bristles is a very important part to make sure that you don't get a very, I don't know, um, dirty looking piece. Um, you'll see it that the first layers always kind of look dirty. Ah, yeah, let's talk about the first time that I'm using the stencil already making a major mistake here because I was brushing on way too many layers before I lifted it up to check. And I created this very harsh line that you will see me try to correct throughout this entire video actually. So yeah, the first rule is that when you're, yeah, first of all, why you're using it is really just to create sharp edges, which is really hard to do if you're just using brushes. Yeah, if you want to create harsh edges, putting down some kind of mask or stencil, I don't really know what the best term for that would be, is a way to do that. Uh, and I really like it for smaller details. But yeah, one of the things that you need to do is control or check often um, what the result is that you're at, because you create a harsh line much quicker than you'd expect. Like you put down more paint then you're really seeing, I don't know, you're kind of wiping off your brush, but you don't really see it getting darker. But when you're using a mask like that, it, uh, yeah, it's very apparent that paint does come off. So yeah, I sped up most of the video, but um, the part where I'm using the stencil, I try to slow down more often so that you can see how I do it. But basically it's an iterative process like I will use the stencil and then create a harsh line, but then I will go over it maybe with more paint to make it a little bit more soft again, or I will use the eraser and then I put more, down more paint. And it's just, I guess dry brushing is just an iterative process like that, where you just yeah, keep working at your layers until they look right for you. So yeah, here I'm adding the shadow under the ear, so you can see um, how beautiful it works with a stencil. I don't know, stencil seems like it's the wrong word, it's probably more like a mask, right? 
I'm not a native speaker, so I don't really know. Let me know if you do. For the upper part of the year, I didn't really have a stencil handy that I had pre-made that would fit. And you'll actually, like, I'm trying to make this work, but uh, later I'll, you'll see me give up and use a new, a new mask for that part. <laughs> and um, I should have done that way sooner. Because here I'm creating edges that are not really helpful. Like obviously if, if what you're having handy is not the right shape, you can still use it. You just have to move the mask around more often to make it work. But yeah. To talk a little bit more about the process, um, you can see here it looks really dirty. Like the first few layers, if you're not really, really careful, um, can just look a little bit yeah, like you didn't blend it out so well. So that's why I'm thinking that if you put down less paint on the bristle, but go over the areas more often, you'll get a smoother result. So yeah, you have to be a little bit patient with it. Later, you'll see me do a little bit of the hair around the ear, which um, will show you what it's like if you load your brush very much because it was black hair that I was painting and I was using a lot of paint. So here I'm just uh, still a little timid and later you'll see me really going at it with the paint so you can see a little bit of the contrast. And of course when you're adding really dark layers, you can't really erase them anymore. I mean not really, you can't erase them anymore so you really need to be aware of that and it's always easier to just build up layers than to go too dark too quickly. Maybe a little bit about the paper. I'm using hot pressed watercolor paper again. Um, this one is from Fabriano, which I really, really like. If you're starting out with a dry brush technique, I would suggest you start with cold pressed paper because the somewhat rougher texture will help you to get more evenly looking layers. It's just a little bit more forgiving than the super smooth hot press paper. I just really like the finish of the hot press paper, which is um, why I prefer to use that. But I have tried cold press paper and I was actually amazed at how easier my life was with that. Here I'm using the detail brush just to sharpen some of those edges. And um, yeah, and then I'm going in to, with a rather loaded brush to add black hair around the ear so yeah just again be sure that that's what you really want before you put down that layer of paint if you're interested in learning yeah the first steps of getting started with a dry brush technique um, I'll link the first tutorial that I made in the description box and probably somewhere up here in the video as well. And I mentioned in that first tutorial that I was going to make a lot more videos about this technique, which I probably will, but possibly not a tutorial form. What I really want to still do is um, like a comparison of materials, which I just find interesting myself. But yeah. And that's the finished ear. I mean, that's how far we've gotten today anyway. <laughs> I really hope you found this useful. Unscripted voiceovers are really hard. The best advice I can really give you is go and try it out for yourself. And with that being said, have a great day. Bye.